Victor Wembanyama is heading to San Antonio as a new face of the Spurs, but today he's about to take on the ultimate challenge. Every player in the league is back into prime form, meaning this is the toughest and most competitive the NBA has ever looked. With that being said, Wemby would get off to a hot start, averaging 17-9-3 as a rookie, eventually winning the Rookie of the Year award. But while that's cool and all, he's got way higher aspirations. I'm trying to win your ring ASAP, so... Be ready. And with his unique blend of size and skill, he has all the tools to make that happen. But he's gonna have to wait a while, because to put it nicely, the Spurs as a team have a long way to go. But there's no way we're gonna leave Wemby to fight by himself. Every season, we're going to be spinning a wheel of upgrades to help him out. Plus 10 finishing? Plus, that's really, that's a lot. That is like multiple upgrades in one, basically. And after said upgrade, Wemby's original rating of a 79 has flown all the way up to an 85. And for the season, he's averaging almost 20 points and 11 rebounds per game. On top of that, he's also getting some help. The Spurs would bring in Isaiah Isaiah Thomas in free agency, who's now back to prime Celtics form, meaning San Antonio now has a legitimate dynamic duo to build around. And that dynamic duo would lead them to 32 wins, missing out on the playoffs. All right, so Wemby's up to his second upgrade already. He hasn't really done anything for as good as he's been. And right now he's getting a plus 10 layup. I already know he's gonna be maxed out after that. And yes, you heard that right. Wemby now has a maxed out layup after that upgrade and his overall rating has already flown up to an 88. But once again, everyone in the league is back into their prime. Wemby has a lot of work to do if he he wants to win MVP because there's more competition than ever. He's back, bro. He's back. He's a 99 overall. But for now, we're not worrying about MVP. Wemby's hooping and so is Isaiah Thomas who's averaging a 20-point double-double of his own. But once again, for a third straight season, Wemby's missing the playoffs. And if this keeps up, he might not be in San Antonio for long. I don't know what's going on to be honest. Plus 10 to all shooting. Okay, so all three of his upgrades have been really good. We're still waiting on him to make the playoffs though. And finally, in his fourth season, he would finally do that, making it into the playoffs as a seventh season. But now the real challenge begins as his first opponent happens to be one of the scariest in the entire league. So the Clippers are the second seed. They have Westbrook, Paul George, and Kawhi, all of which are in the high 90s. But Wemby's now into the 90s himself, and he would make a huge splash in his first playoff game, falling one assist short of a triple-double. There's been some insane playoff debuts throughout history, but Wemby might have the best by far. Or at least it would be if they didn't get absolutely smoked by Prime Westbrook. And Wemby's first playoff game is a 30-point loss, so that's a fantastic sign. And that unfortunately would repeat the rest of the series as it's basically a three-on-one. Wemby would continue to show out, but the Clippers trio would fight back and then some, eventually taking a 3-0 lead. And unfortunately in Game 4, despite some late-game heroics from Wemby, they pass it down to Wemby, one last shot draws the foul and won. The Clippers would eventually sweep the series and send him right back to the upgrade wheel. And now he's getting a badge boost this time, plus one to all playmaking. And for the 2028 season, Wemby's stats would take another leap, finally making the all-star team. But for a second straight season, he would be taken down by Russell Westbrook in the playoffs, who would eventually win the championship and the finals MVP. And at this point, it's looking like Wemby might not be a spur for life. And that's because according to Wemby himself, he wants to win and we haven't done anything. But for the following season, Wemby would once again reach a another level, winning 45 games to make it to the 6th seed, and after averaging a 30-point double-double in the first round, he would eventually upset the 3 seeded Lakers who had prime LeBron and AD. He finally won a playoff series, now he's up against the Warriors with a higher seed, but fortunately for Wemby, somewhere along the line, the Warriors lost Clay, leaving only Steph in the backcourt, who would wind up destroying the Spurs anyway, taking a 3-1 lead. And now we're down 3-1. But we've seen the Warriors both 3-1 leads before, and in Game 5, which happened to be at home, Wemby would take the first step to doing so. Emmanuel quickly with the board, pass over to Wemby. Wemby with the half spin, the step back in the paint, one-legged shot like Dirk. Oh my god, Wemby has Draymond on him, bro. Cook him, cook him, cook him! Oh my god, oh my god, yep, I knew it right away. As soon as he drove to the basket, I knew Wemby was getting a hand on that. And as you can tell, Wemby's taking this one, officially making it a 3-2 series. Bro, are they dropping confetti? We're still down 3-2. That could literally age so poorly. But for now, it wouldn't, because on the road, Wemby would dominate once again, eventually finishing the game with 33 points and 12 assists. But most importantly, he's bringing the Spurs one step closer to a 3-1 comeback. We still have one more game to play, Steph's wide open, but it looks like Wemby's, I mean, no, not looks like, he is forcing game seven. Wemby's one game away from making history and ironically taking down the Warriors from a 3-1 deficit. But finally in Game 7, Steph would show up with 35 points of his own, dominating the game from the outside. But ultimately, it wasn't enough because Wemby would have 41 points of his own, 10 rebounds, and most importantly, one exclamation point. Steph about to be blocked. Yup, blocked by Wemby. He still made it. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. And with that, Wemby's officially surmounted a 3-1 deficit, making history and taking down a team with multiple Hall of Famers in the process. Now we can drop the confetti. Now it actually makes sense. Now he's heading to his first ever conference finals where he would get cooked by Westbrook, Kawhi, and Paul George to send him home. Just a really unfortunate turn of events. Oh my 
god, bro, that Clippers team is nuts, man. And for the 2030 season, it would continue to be a rough go for Wemby. He'd win 52 games, but then match up against the Warriors and Steph, who would get their revenge for last season. Golden State, Golden State's coming for revenge. Oh my god, bro. Not only that, but in the following season, it seems like Wemby might be plateauing, because again, while he would do his thing in the regular season, he would get eliminated, ironically, by his former mentor Rudy Gobert and the Wolves' second round. Mm. Bro. And finally, in 2032, Wemby would be entering the final season of his contract. The Spurs would definitely try to persuade him to stay by signing Bradley Beal in the offseason, but still, it wasn't enough. And unlike previous Spurs of the past, he's not staying in San Antonio. He's taking his talents to Boston. Wemby's first season with the franchise would be business as usual, as he'd average a 30-point double-double. But in terms of playoff success, it would come in the following season, storming past everyone in his way to his first conference finals. We have the New York-Boston rivalry in the conference finals, and the Knicks have Jalen Rose, Jalen Rose, Derrick Rose, and Jalen Brown in the backcourt. Wemby now has his best chance to make it to the finals, and he would get off to a hot start with 41 points in game one. But not so fast, because the Knicks are led by prime MVP D. Rose, who would ultimately take game one in convincing fashion. Not only that, but in game two, Wemby would put up a historic stat line we'll get to later. But again, he would lose to go down 2-0. Okay, so we're down. Wemby had 57 and we lost. Wemby shockingly is on the brink of being eliminated yet again, but he would answer the call in game three to make it two to one. Now he has to focus on game four to tie up the series and ultimately avoid going down 3-1. Yo, can we pass it to Wemby, bro? Julius Randle is 6'8", guarding seven foot four Wemby. Pass it to Wemby, pass it to Wemby. Wemby's cutting. Mitchell Robinson, what are you doing, man? What is he doing? What is he doing? Bro, he dribbled out the whole clock. Lonzo Ball, desperation. Oh my God, okay. Tie game, minute 30 left. Jalen Brown, top of the key. He's on the ISO. He's dribbled through like the entire shot clock, bro. He's ISOed the whole time he draws. He might miss one, bro. He might. He might, yep. Jalen Brown, he's not really, he's not like the greatest free throw shooter of all time. He's probably making that one. We have to give it to Wemby, bro. Wemby has six foot eight Julius Randle on him. And Lonzo runs out of what, man? And while rightfully so, we've been focusing on D-Rose, we can't forget about Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown with the ball, Jalen Brown. Bro, no way, no, he drew another foul. Oh my God. Bro, I don't understand what's going on. He's getting his revenge in the TD Garden. Bro, pass it, pass it, pass it. Thank you, they finally pass it to him. Oh my God. See how easy that was, man? Overcomplicating the game for no reason. Julius Randle, 6'8", Wemby, 7'7". Seven, seven. Not 7'7", seven, seven, more like 7'4". Jalen Brown's a drop, or, yep, I, I knew it. Yep, he drew another foul. Another Another and one. I'm at a loss for words, man. That's three straight fouls, two and ones. And now with a five point deficit, the Celtics have to do something fast. Lonzo, today, pass it today. Yo, you're doing like a bunch of dribble moves for no reason. You just burned like five seconds off the clock. Wemby's dominating. We have to get one stop. Jalen Brown, he has taken over. We have to get, bro, put Wemby on him. Screw it. Oh my God. Another foul? And of course, Jared Allen, notorious good free throw shooter, is going to make both. I appreciate the post-ups, but now is not the time. Yo, Lonzo Ball is just kind of selling, bro. He's kind of just standing around. I don't know what's going on. Wemby with the fade. It's good. Help him. And after yet another foul, D-Rose would be heading to the line where he would split the two free throws, meaning there's not much time left for the Celtics. Shoot a three. Lonzo, shoot a three. Shoot a three. Shoot a three. Shoot a three. They pass it down. They're not sending a double, which, you know, that's smart. I mean, bro, the Knicks are fine with just letting them shoot a bunch of twos. Wemby is cooking, man. But Wemby's late game heroics would prove to be futile, as a few more D-Rose free throws would seal it, making it a 3-1 series. Wemby's on the brink of yet another heartbreaking playoff exit, but with his back against the wall, he would come out the gates flying in both games 5 and 6, dominating from both inside and out to tie the series, just to ultimately lose in game 7. Someone has to help Wemby, man, because Wemby's doing everything he can. It's another unfortunate mark on Wemby's playoff resume, and it wouldn't stop there, because in the 2035 season, he would be eliminated. The 2036 season, also eliminated. And just like that, Wemby's now a free agent for the second time. His talent is apparent, but the fact that everyone's in their primes has been working against him hard. But this time in free agency, he would make a smart choice and use that to his advantage, signing with the Sacramento Kings, pairing up with prime Carmelo Anthony. And the two would immediately have chemistry, dominating the league from the jump. But their second season together would be the one where they made their mark. They would start off their playoff run by defeating the Suns and Rock Rockets to make it to the conference finals, but waiting for them would be the Clippers team that's eliminated Wemby several times in the past. But this time the tables have turned, as while it took six games, Wemby's finally getting his revenge, sending them home. Why is DeAndre Ayton holding up the trophy? I don't understand. With the help of Carmelo Anthony, Wemby has now made it to his first finals after 15 seasons. All his playoff struggles have led him to this very moment, watching LaMelo and the Hornets celebrate a championship on his home floor.
But unlike previous playoff runs, this time Wemby wouldn't fall into a downward spiral. Both him and Melo still have no chips and they would feed off that motivation, making it back to the finals for a second straight time. And now to look at the Cavs team, they have Donovan Mitchell, Paolo, and then like role players and stuff, and like Steven Adams who played with Wemby earlier. At this point, Melo and Wemby are the clear favorites and with home court advantage, they have no excuse to lose. So as you would expect, the dynamic duo would go off in game one, combining for 65 points to go up 1-0. We're taking game one, Wemby takes game one, Melo takes game one however you want to put it and game two would also be no different Melo and Wemby might be the most versatile scoring duo of all time and the Cavs have no answer for them Sacramento would be heading to Cleveland up 2-0 and while the Cavs would win game three Wemby and Melo would bounce right back dominating again combining for 62 points to go up 3-1 Wemby's wild NBA journey has taken him from San Antonio to Boston and now Sacramento and now with the help of Melo he's finishing the job it's over Wemby has finally oh my god bro Wemby's finally done it. Dude, I have been sitting here for so long just waiting. Why is DeAndre Hunter holding up the trophy? Give it to Melo or Wemby, bro. It took him forever, but Wemby finally has his championship. And out of all the players who have attempted this challenge, he's by far the tallest, which may have been the difference. But what about the opposite end of the spectrum? Would a smaller player like John Morant, for example, be able to complete this challenge? To find out the answer to that question, click the video on the screen.